Sadly, Boeing seems to have found itself in another crisis. As most people may know by now, a Boeing 737 MAX 9 experienced a blowout incident on January 5th during an Alaska Airlines flight out of Portland. From inside the aircraft, the section of the fuselage appeared to be just a regular window section. However, this panel was actually a deactivated emergency exit. The terrifying footage of the incident has made its way around the internet, with some aviation regulators making the decision to ground the aircraft type. At least over the past few days, the situation has been developing quite quickly, but let's take today's video to summarize the incident and what we know so far, as well as the global reaction and what this means for Boeing. So on January 5th, a Boeing 737 MAX 9 operated by Alaska Airlines experienced the blowout of a section of its fuselage. This particular section, on the left side of row 26, was a deactivated emergency exit door, which, from the inside, appeared to be a regular window. Technically though, it's known as a door plug. When airlines decide to configure their aircraft with a higher density layout, with over 200 passengers, this section of the fuselage will see an emergency exit complete with an evacuation slide, enough legroom for passengers to safely evacuate, as well as other evacuation features. However, in the case of Alaska Airlines and many other operators, a low density seating plan allows for fewer emergency exits. As highlighted by the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, this incident could have been much worse. Luckily, no one was seated in seats 26A or B, nor was the aircraft up at cruising altitude. If the jet had reached cruising altitude, it was pointed out that many passengers would have taken off their seatbelts. Some would have gotten up to use the lavatory, while in-flight service may have been initiated by the crew. Rather than loss of life, it appears that parts of the closest seating was sucked out as was a tray table. Other reports note that a child closest to the damage had their shirt ripped off by the violent depressurization, while several people's phones were sucked out of their hands through the hole. For several days, the NTSB searched for the door plug, which fell to the ground. The government body had also asked the public to assist in the search. Several mobile phones were found early on, but it was only in the last few hours of producing this video that reports surfaced of the door plug being found. According to KATU2 News, within minutes of the scheduled press conference ending, the NTSB came back out and said that they had breaking news. NTSB Chair Jennifer Amundi stated, I'm excited to announce that we found the door plug, adding, thank you, Bob. Bob contacted us at witness at ntsb.gov with two photos of the uh, door plug uh, and said he found it in his backyard. One major noteworthy fact about the incident is that the aircraft involved was essentially brand new, having been delivered to Alaska Airlines in November 2023. However, it appears that the aircraft had already been experiencing issues prior to the January 5th incident. As reported by the Air Current, the affected aircraft had experienced pressurization issues one day prior to the accident. It was still deemed safe to fly, but Alaska had revoked the jet's ability to perform extended operations, or ETOPS, such as services to Hawaii. An airline spokesperson told the media outlet, These types of aircraft pressurization system write-ups are typical in large aircraft commercial aviation operations. She went on to say that, out of an abundance of caution, Alaska Airlines has an internal policy to restrict aircraft with multiple maintenance write-ups on certain systems, even when resolved consistent with FAA regulations from flying TOPS flights for a period of time. The NTSB later noted that Alaska Airlines had ordered additional maintenance to be conducted on the aircraft, but this did not occur before the incident. As noted by Chris Brady of the Boeing 737 Technical Guide website, the door plug is attached in the closed position by just four bolts. Brady notes that two bolts go through the upper guide fittings and two lower hinge bolts go through the lower hinges bracket assemblies. For this incident to have occurred, something must have been amiss with at least one of these bolts, he states. Official reaction to the incident was fairly swift. Hours after it took place, Alaska Airlines announced that it would be grounding its entire fleet of 65 Boeing 737 MAX 9s in order to conduct inspections, a procedure that has been stated to take around four hours. As reported by PBS, the airline had returned 18 of its 65 MAX 9s to service on Saturday, January 6th, following inspections that came less than 24 hours after the incident. United Airlines eventually announced that it would be doing the same, while India's aviation regulator ordered an inspection of all 737 MAX aircraft operated by Indian carriers. 
all of which operate the MAX-8. A Federal Aviation Administration Emergency Airworthiness Directive was issued shortly after, which grounded approximately 170 737 MAX-9 aircraft operating in U.S. airspace. The directive prompted airlines to inspect their aircraft before further operation. On Sunday, January 7th, federal officials indicated that further maintenance might be required, and so Alaska Airlines decided to ground its entire MAX-9 fleet again. For many airlines, this has led to flight cancellations and minor travel chaos. An Alaska spokesperson told PBS, these aircraft have now also been pulled from service until details about possible additional maintenance work are confirmed with the FAA. We're in touch with the FAA to determine what, if any, further work is required before these aircraft are returned to service. According to Bloomberg, more airlines around the world have taken similar precautionary measures. A media outlet reported on Sunday night that Turkish Airlines, Aeromexico, and Copa Airlines had grounded most or all of their MAX 9 aircraft. Other regulators around the world have stated that they will be closely monitoring the situation and working closely with the FAA on any new developments. At this early stage of the investigation, much more information needs to be gathered. We've only been on, on scene for 24 hours, one day. We have a lot of work to do. This isn't going to be a one or two days and we're done. This could be, you know, weeks that we're here. As we've noted repeatedly, however, it's difficult to see this as anything other than a manufacturing issue, especially given the age of the aircraft. Between now and the issuance of a preliminary report, much, if not all, of the attention will be on Boeing, not only due to the nature of the incident, but also due to the aircraft type and past issues regarding safety and quality control. Photos and videos that have already circled the internet are terrifying, and it will undoubtedly be an uncomfortable position for Boeing, as it's the company responsible for producing the aircraft and conducting final quality control checks before delivery. As Liam News stated in a 2024 Outlook piece, Boeing needs a boring year. The plane maker would have done well to quietly get its production numbers up without any further airworthiness directives or news regarding manufacturing issues. Unfortunately, just five days into 2024, this hope has been dashed. For Boeing, the events of Alaska Airlines Flight AS-1282 will lead to further scrutiny of the 737 MAX and production standards and quality control. Sadly, its reputation will be, or already has been, damaged yet again even without any official report condemning the company. But what do you think of this ordeal? Are we clearly seeing another Boeing 737 MAX crisis unfold? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.